A very good evening to everyone. We welcome you all to our ISA National PG online classes. To begin with, I would like to welcome our Honorary Secretary of ISA National, Dr. Sukhvinder Bajwa. Sir, we welcome you. Thank you, Dr. Josna. As usual, we are again back on track on the Monday evening, 6.30. Uh, today, we are having this one very important class on uh, carcinomoral cavity and anesthesia management. Rather, it's the airway management. The most important part is because we are sharing the airway with the surgeon or with the ENT surgeon or any general surgeon or onco surgeon. So it is going to throw many challenges. The plus other parts of community is compromised, sometimes the age-related changes and other comorbidities. And uh, we have got very eminent faculty, which our speakers, our facilitators will be introducing to you. And hope this will be a very good class. And we're going to test one young faculty, Dr. Parul Kaushik is a young faculty, under the guidance of Dr. Madhu Gupta, ma'am, and with their resident, uh, second year resident, Ananya Sharma. So, Ajosna, I think we should start with the proceedings. Please, sir. Recording, we will start. Okay. So, so going, going on. Recording is on. As it is customary, we always start with the blessings of Goddess Saraswati. Tarisha Saraswati Vidyaram now I would like to introduce our junior coordinator for today, Dr. Deepa Gurg. Dr. Deepa Gurg is Associate Professor in Anesthesia in JLN Medical College, Ajmer. Thank you, Dr. Gurg. Thank you, Madam. I would request you to kindly introduce our faculty for today. Yes, ma'am. So, good evening, everyone. Um, today, our faculty are first is Dr. Madhugupta, madam. She is professor of anesthesia and critical care in ESI Postgraduate Institute of Medical Science and, Science and Research, Vasai Darpur, New Delhi. Our areas of special interest are obstetric anesthesia and pediatric anesthesia. Our experience as teacher and clinical clinician is 40 years. Our public, she has publications in various national and international journals. She is also a BLS and ACLS instructor. She is a faculty in Airway Foundation. She has conducted various CMEs and workshops at, as a organizer as well as faculty and uh, she has been awarded WHO fellowship in 2001 and she has also been awarded fellowship from Indian College of Anesthesiologists. We welcome you ma'am, it's a privilege to have yes. you. Thank you Dr. Bajova, Deepak and uh, yourself. Thank you for the kind introduction. Welcome ma'am. Our uh, another faculty is Dr. Parul Kosik. She is Assistant Professor in Department of Anesthesiology and Critical Care, ESI Postgraduate Institute of Medical Science and Research, Basai Darpur, New Delhi. Her areas of interest are acute and chronic pain management, pediatric anesthesia, and obstetric anesthesia. She has fellowship in pain management from SQLAP Academies Academy. She is qualified European Diploma in Anesthesiology and Intensive Care for EDEC in 2019. She also has conducted various CMEs and workshops, and she has publications in, in various national and international journals. We welcome you, Dr. Paral Kosik. Thank you, sir. I would just take a few minutes to thank Dr. Madhugupta, ma'am, because she's been very encouraging me, encouraging to me for doing this. And I also thank Bajwa, sir, also for letting me have this opportunity. Thank you so much to all of you. Welcome, Dr. Welcome. Dr. Now I would request the faculty to kindly introduce our residents. And at the same time, we request all attendees to kindly mute yourselves and ask your questions in the chat box. Okay, so uh, Dr. Ananya, who is second year postgraduate student, 
very soon within two weeks time going to be third year postgraduate uh, resident will present the case sheet ananya you can start okay ma'am i'm sharing my screen now am i audible to everybody yes 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 good evening respected seniors and colleagues uh, i i am dr ananya sharma i am a post graduate in esi pgi msr basai barapur i will be presenting the case today my patient is a 66 year old male patient belonging to darbanga bihar presently residing in nangal delhi he is a painter by profession presented with the chief complaint of an ulcer over the inner aspect of right cheek since 5 months the patient noticed a small ulcer in the right side of oral cavity 5 to 6 months back the ulcer gradually progressed to current size it is associated with pain which is constantly present and increases on movement of jaw it is associated with difficulty in chewing from right side there is history of foul smell from mouth since 3 months history of streaks of blood on spit occasionally and history of weight loss 7 to 8 kg in the last 6 months patient has history of difficulty in breathing on exertion which he mentioned he starts feeling breathless after climbing one flight of stairs there is no history of sensory loss or hypoesthesia over face no history of ear ache no history of chest pain or palpitations and no history of change in voice wait ananya wait yes. uh, go to the ha huh. so ananya you said yes. patient had ulcer and he had associated pain uh, yes what was the what did you ask about the description of the pain was this pain constant it was radiating somewhere what all you should ask when you are asked someone is telling about the pain type of pain <clears throat> yes ma'am okay. ma'am we will ask ma'am we will ask about the onset of pain the site of pain if it is associated with any aggravating factors or any relieving factors mm -hmm. uh, and then we will ask if the pain radiates or not radiates to anywhere so that history becomes incomplete you know we have just said you have just said it is associated with pain we yes. have mentioned aggravating factors for the pain whether it was radiating or not whether it was constant or it was coming or going yes in yes. same way you said patient noticed a ulcer in the oral cavity it gradually progressed to the current yes. side yes. did you take any history from the patient that was this ulcer constantly growing in size or in between there was a phase that that subsided or had he ever gone to dentist or to some doctor for this ulcer and ma'am it was the, very beginning the, it was with the streaks of blood sorry ma'am from the very beginning for the last 6 months only patient had streaks of blood in the spit no ma'am that Uh, as the ulcer grew in size, he started no noticing the streaks of blood. So apparently, they were uh, they started recently one month. Back. So I think we are you are supposed yes, to mention all these histories. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Even if the there is a yes, negative history that pain was not radiating anywhere, this ulcer had never patient had never seen a doctor for the ulcer. This yes, they were. a patient only noticed single ulcer there was uh, at no other site in the oral cavity he noticed the ulcer or yes. anywhere else or uh, so you have to complete the history in the when patient is complaining of ulcer or pain with all these things anything else no, yes uh, uh, adanya you've written there is a history of weight loss 7 to 8 kg in last 6 months does yes sir Yes, ma'am. Significant weight loss uh, is defined as 4.5 kgs or more than 5 percent of previous weight loss lost intentionally in six to twelve months. Unintentionally. Unintentionally. 
in 6 to 12 months 6 months yes uh, up to 6 months if over 6 yes. months people will use it yes ananya what can be the cause of foul smell from the mouth for last 3 months uh, ma'am due to the growth in the mouth and because there is difficulty in movement of the jaw the patient has not been taking care of oral hygiene he has not been brushing also since the ulcer might be infected so there can be smell because of pus as well okay but uh, have you taken the history that patient is not able to open the mouth as you are saying not able to brush i have asked ma'am and he is not able to brush because there is pain in any movement of the mouth because of pain in the movement of mouth whenever he has to open the mouth or uh, do anything he has pain so that's why he avoids it okay okay go ahead yes and about the negative history yes what do you expect why do you ask for the history of ear ache in this patient uh ma'am in cases of any oral pathology uh there are three nerves which can cause referred otalgia glossopharyngeal nerve uh vagus nerve and mandibular nerve the mandibular nerve gives auricular temporal nerve in the ear and it gives buccal lingual uh, branches buccal lingual and inferior alveolar branches in the oral cavity so these nerves they meet be before the foramen ovale and they transmit simultaneously to the uh, trigeminal ganglion thus it thus it can be perceived as ear ache similarly in vagus also we have a uh, auricular nerve in the ear and superior laryngeal nerve and pharyngeal nerve in the oral cavity and uh, what is the relevance what is the relevance of asking for change in voice in this with this history ma'am we can uh, uh, assess the extent of the growth by asking the change in voice because if any oral pathology is extending up to the glottic opening or the vocal cords there will be change in voice if it is at the vocal cords then there will be coarse change in voice and if it is subglottic it will be muffled okay also uh, ma'am if you can uh, you have written that patient is giving difficulty in breathing on exertion yes. so uh, how have you checked for this and what grading have you given the patient with this uh, ma'am ma'am we have i have asked the patient if he is able to climb two flights of stairs without getting breathless he has said do he gets breathless after one flight of stairs i have then asked him if he does his regular routine work without getting breathless uh, which he has said yes to i will grade him uh, as per metabolic equivalents ma'am uh, uh, which is met score for any preoperative patient i would like at least Uh, after optimization for meds to be at least above four, uh, so in this patient, it, uh, the meds are less than four. Okay, go ahead. Past history: patient is a known case of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease since ten years on medication MDI Tiova and MDI Foracort CD. patient is also a known case of hypertension since 5 years it is well controlled on tablet tell me sartan 40 mg bd patient is not a known case of diabetes mellitus cad cva or any thyroid disorder patient has not received any chemotherapy or radiotherapy no history of any drug allergy no history of any past surgeries no history of blood transfusion personal history there is history of tobacco chewing 3 to 4 packets per day since 30 years history of smoking 30 pack years patient stopped smoking and chewing tobacco 2 weeks back occasional alcohol intake on social occasions there is the patient has mixed diet normal bladder bowel habits and a normal sleep awake cycle Can on general Yes, ma'am. Uh, so uh, you you have said that he is on regular medications for the COPD also. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, how do you know if the patient is uh, optimized by history? Um, 
Ma'am, I asked if the uh, patient has had any acute exacerbations. If he was taken to the hospital recently, if he had to be nebulized in emergency, and he has given negative history for that, and he has given history that he uh, uh, has been regularly taking the uh, prescribed medication. Okay. So, uh, if uh, how many exacerbations per year will you uh, consider as patient is requiring frequent? I mean that. Give this classification to be with a poor uh, control. Ma'am, if uh, the patient has severe uh, COPD, then you will consider him to be on lower control. Uh, more than three acute okay. exacerbations. Two exacerbations. Okay, no? More than two exacerbations. With the treatment that the patient is undergoing. Yes. Okay. Okay. Go Have ahead. you taken history of chemotherapy and radiotherapy? Uh, Ma'am, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and radiotherapy have various anesthetic implications for us. Uh, all chemotherapy drugs have uh, effect on the organ systems. Uh, in this particular case, since uh, we will, uh, there might be oral uh, carcinoma. So in that case, a patient will most likely be given cisplatin or 5-chlorouracil. These drugs have specific effects like cisplatin affects the kidney function test by reducing the GFR and serum creatinine. It is, so we have to be careful in any patient who has been on cisplatin and carefully have the kidney function test and GFR examined. Uh, okay. A patient on 5-chlorouracil uh, has chances of developing cholestasis. So we will also get detailed liver evaluation in these patients. All chemotherapy, all uh, chemotherapy drugs also cause pancytopenia, which increase the chance of bleeding during uh, the surgery, increase the chance of infections, and also decrease the oxygen carrying capacity. Uh, this is for chemotherapy. Uh, radiotherapy is significant because it causes uh, fibrosis. It can cause fibrosis. Especially if it is given in the head and neck region, it can cause fibrosis, trismus, reduce mobility of tongue and neck, and it can also cause glottic and subglottic edema, which obscures our laryngoscopic view, thus making an airway a difficult one. So it is very important for us to take this history. Oh, okay, okay ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, on examination. Ma'am, can I go ahead? Yes, yes. On examination, patient is conscious, oriented to time, place, and person, malnourished in appearance, pallor is present. <coughs> Excuse me. There is clubbing grade three, lymph adenopathy in cervical group of lymph nodes till level one B and two. There is no icterus or cyanosis, no periorbital or fetal edema. The height is 170 centimeter and weight is 56 kgs, which makes BMI to be 19.3 kg per meter square. Wait, wait, but, wait, Adhanya, go on previous slide. You said clubbing is grade 3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are the grades of clubbing? Uh, Ma'am, there are oh, four grades. Are there, huh? there are four grades of clubbing. Mm -hmm. Grade 1 is increased fluctuation of nail bed. Grade 2 is obliteration of lovey bond angle. Grade 3 is parrot beak or drumstick appearance. And grade 4 is hypertrophic eye osteoarthritis. So, how do you examine in a patient? What is Shamrod's sign? Have you ever heard of it? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, in... Yes, ma'am. In Shamrod's sign, we will ask the patient to face both Take the two uh, inside um, first fingers of both the hands and uh, have the nail beds face each other. If we see a diamond shape dorsal, being formed, dorsal, dorsal surface of the terminal phalanx, you know, yes, yes, different hands. Yes, ma'am. Make them closer, and there yes, will be a diamond shaped window, which is which gets obliterated when it is clubbing is great. So you have said your patient was having clubbing grade 3. So what are yes, the common causes of clubbing? Ma'am, clubbing is caused by cardiac causes, respiratory causes and gastrointestinal causes mainly. In, and also by uh, smoking. So in uh, if there is any 
reduced cardiopulmonary reserve if there are any underlying pulmonary pathology if there is ulcerative okay, colitis we will see clubbing name few pulmonary pathologies in which it is common ma'am obstructive lung disease uh, occupational airway disorder it's not uh, obstructive lung disease you can't say like this it is common in lung tumors bronchitis yes, cystic yes, so you have to name it is not common in uh, COPDs. It is common in bronchitis, then yes, cystic heart diseases, congenital heart diseases. At times, it may be iatrogenic. It runs in families, which is just the three percent of the case. Okay, yes. so our patient was having clubbing grade three means uh, parrot beak appearance of the. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So, and you said no periorbital or pedal edema. Yes, ma'am. Why did you ask? Why, achha, what do you mean to say by that? How do uh, you examine I mean, for pedal edema? Ma'am, we will uh, take the shin bone and we will keep our finger for uh, five seconds and then we will remove it. If and then we will count up to five. If the patient, uh, the if the edema is pitting and it does not come back, so then there is pitting edema. Okay. Along bony prominences, we will check the pedal edema along bony prominence. Okay. Shall we move? Oh, Parul, you want to ask something on this uh, slide? Just uh, Ananya, if you uh, have said the patient was malnourished in appearance, yes. so uh, can you correlate the BMI of the patient with your observation? Uh, Ma'am, underweight is in Indian population is defined less than nineteen. So this patient is just in normal limit because nineteen to twenty four is normal limit. Was your patient taking orally? Was he eating? Ma'am, he gave history of eating semi of preferring semi solids because he has a lot of problem in chewing. And there is no loss of appetite otherwise. No, ma'am. No, he did not give that. So basically, no. her patient was not malnourished, as yes. per the BMI. I know. Yes, ma'am. Five is what you call underweight, right? 18.2, yes, 24.9 is normal BMI here. Yes, ma'am. Poorly built, poorly built in appearance. Okay, go okay. ahead. Uh, the pulse rate is seventy-four per minute. It is regular in rate, rhythm, normal, normal in volume and character. There is no radio radial or radio femoral delay. And all peripheral pulses were felt. BP is one fifty eight by ninety millimeter of mercury, recorded in right arm in sitting position. Respiratory rate is sixteen per minute. Uh, the respiration is abdominal thoracic, and no accessory muscles were used. The oxygen saturation is ninety six percent on room air. Temperature is ninety eight degree Fahrenheit in right axilla. On examination, the facial symmetry is distorted. Bilateral nostrils are patent, right more than left. There is poor oral hygiene. Tobacco stained teeth. Incomplete dentition is there, wherein few teeth are missing. There is no loose tooth, and dental caries are present. On local examination, we can see an ulcerative proliferative growth on the right side of oral cavity, in which the lower alveolus is involved. On airway assessment. The mouth opening is 1.5 centimeters. Uh, uh, by Calder's test, the lower incisors are aligned with the upper incisors. Thyromental distance is 6 centimeter. Hyomental distance is 5 centimeter, and sternomental distance is 12 centimeter. The upper lip bite test is negative. Lower incisors cannot bite upper lip. Uh, Malampati grade could not be assessed due to inadequate mouth opening. And neck movements are normal. On systemic examination, uh, respiratory system, the chest is normal on inspection. No use of accessory muscles is there. Bilateral normal vesicular breathing sounds are auscultated. No added sounds and breath sounds are diminished. Cardiovascular system, precordium is normal in on inspection. No dilated veins or scar. On palpation, apex beat is at fifth intercostal space, just medial to mid clavicular line. No parasternal heave, no thrills or pulsation. On auscultation, S1 and S2 are present. 
there is no murmur the jupiter venus pressure is 13 cm of water central nervous system gcs is 15 the motor power is 5 by 5 in all limbs tone and bulk are normal on both sides there is no sensory loss and all cranial nerves examined are within normal limbs summary a 66 year old male patient painter by profession presented with the chief complaints of an ulcer near right lower part of oral cavity which was gradually progressive associated with pain and difficulty in chewing from right side there is history of weight loss 7 to 8 kg in the last 6 months patient is a known case of copd since 10 years on mbi foracord and mbi toabd patient is a known case of hypertension since 5 years on telnisartan 40 mgbd patient is a chronic smoker and tobacco chewer quit since 2 weeks back on examination and ulcerative proliferative growth is present on airway examination the mouth opening is reduced to 1.5 cm okay and uh, in the examination did you further examine this ulcer you said there was an ulcer so ulcer may you have to write your findings of inspection of ulcer palpation of ulcer ma'am because the mouth opening was very reduced i could not make out uh, and i was unable to palpate however during using a light source i could see that there is some ulcerative growth on the right side and it is involving the lower uh, gums what are the what are the parts or how do you describe ulcer how will you define ulcer ma'am we will describe by size uh, location okay uh, size, then location yes and color and shape, if it is number shape, yes sir so there was single also <clears throat> you have to I mention could, all these things yes ma'am i could not make out very clearly ma'am margin, so i could only you have to tell about the margins of the ulcer margin yes, gives lot of information whether they were rolled out margins or undermined margins yes ma'am and did you try to how was the floor was the floor covered with some slurf or with red granulation tissue was there any discharge from the ulcer all these things have to be mentioned whenever you are examining an ulcer okay and you have to do palpation also where you have to see how much tenderness is there whether it is fixed to the tissues what is the temperature of the nearby uh, area this by which you can reach up to your dd yes ma'am hmm yes ma'am also uh, ananya you have written the facial symmetry is distorted yes so uh, this does not give you a picture of what we are looking at how is it distorted because your ulcer is just inside the oral cavity is what you have been telling us so how is the yes ma'am because of the uh, probably because of whatever pathology is there there is some inflammation but it was causing a uh, slight visible swelling and also patient is not moving that side of the face much so maybe because of that the symmetry appeared distorted okay uh, you should also uh, tell that if the uh, whatever ulcer you is, the, is there of you are saying an ulcer of proliferative growth is there in the oral cavity whether it is try any uh, sinus fistula or other things can be seen over the face because these are generally these generally tend to communicate and come out which can be a problem when you are taking this case for yes, a bad mask okay yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so coming to your summary and uh, from history and examination what is your dd or provisional diagnosis Uh, ma'am provisional diagnosis is oral uh, since we cannot uh, since no further investigations are done we can only say that this is a uh, oral ulcer proliferative growth so will you call it chronic or acute chronic ma'am because it has been there for 6 months no what what is the definition ma'am more than 3 months so if it is for there for more than 3 months you have to call it chronic so it is chronic ulcer yes so, ma'am what is the differential diagnosis for those chronic ulcers yes ma'am a uh, chronic ulcer can be present uh, it can be an abscess ulcer uh, there can be any uh, micronutrient deficiencies there can be local trauma uh, 
there can be some chip tooth which is causing repeated trauma trauma there can be dental caries uh, which has led to an infective this thing uh, if yeah. then there it can uh, it can be iatrogenic if some dental tooth removal has caused injury or uh, it can be malignancy there can be uh, pre malignant changes yes it can be bechet's disease yes ma'am bechet's disease and, क्या होता है उसमें मैम इट इज माइक्रो वैस्कुलर इट इज अ वैस्कुलाइटिस ऑफ स्मॉल वेसल्स एंड यू विल फाइंड पेशेंट विल गिव हिस्ट्री ऑफ अल्सर्स इन ओरल कैविटी जेनाइटल रीजन एंड मे बी कंजंक्टिवाइटिस इट कैन बी दैट और देर कैन बी क्रोनिक ट्यूबोर्कुलर अल्सर इट कैन बी देर विथ एच Yes, okay. Or P simplex, lichen planus, all yes, these are the causes of chronic oral, oral ulcers. Ulcer, yes, which definite diagnosis you can give only after histopathology. Even with the GI diseases, with Crohn's diseases, yes, chronic sir. ulcerative colitis, you can have such chronic ulcers. Yes, sir. So uh, suppose I say that histopathology was done. and it showed squamous cell carcinoma and now the surgeon wants to operate on this mm-hmm. what all investigation other than the routine investigation what all would you like to have for this patient suppose you will be the anesthetist of that case now mm-hmm. you come to know it is carcinoma and surgeon wants to take up the case what mm-hmm. all investigations would you advise to this patient Okay. Yes. Uh, ma- uh, apart from our uh, normal hemogram, uh, liver function test, kidney function test, twelve lead ECG, chest X-ray, uh, coagulation profile. Uh, I will get basic uh, urine microscopy done. I will also uh, get uh, viral markers done. Then I will I will uh, get a CT face, chest, and neck done to see the X. local extent of the disease and also to see if there are there is any local metastasis or lung metastasis okay uh, then i will uh, get pulmonary function tests done because patient is a known case of uh, copd uh, then i will uh, okay since patient is hypertensive would you like to investigate Yes, I'm. Um, since he's uh, hypertensive and also it is a uh, oral carcinoma patient, so we will like to get a baseline two D echo done as well. And uh, since he is giving history of breathlessness, we would get uh, we can get uh, stress echo cardiography done okay. to rule out any cardiac. Yeah, suppose the PFT machine in the hospital is not working. Okay, mm-hmm. are you aware of some bedside uh, lung function test? Uh, can you enumerate three four tests? Going to the bedside of the patient, and you can uh, infer that yes, lung function tests are okay or not. Uh, yes, ma'am. There are a number of uh, tests which we can do uh, uh, at the bedside of the patient. Firstly, we can see the respiratory rate of the patient. If uh, there is any uh, tachypnea, uh, increased respiratory rate present, uh, then we can have a match blow test. in which we will keep a match stick lit uh, 6 inches which is 15 cm away from the patient and ask him to blow if he is able to blow out the match that means the uh, maximum breathing capacity is good and if he is unable to do that that means it is uh, less uh, then we can also uh, see the post expiratory uh, test in which we will ask him to take a long breath deep breath and then ha- ask him to forcefully expire and we will keep our stethoscope over the trachea mm-hmm. and if uh, it is there for uh, more than uh, it is there for 3 to 5 seconds that means it is uh, normal yes uh, and if you have got right respirometer or peak expiratory yes, rate meter we can even use those things to assess the lung function test bedside lung function test yes ma'am also one very commonly done is the breath holding time which we yes, generally do all the time for these patients yes so 
okay this these are the investigations you would like to do for this patient and if i say patient ka hemoglobin is 10 grams blood sugar is normal ecg is normal there is no metastasis seen anywhere and there is no local invasion it is uh, limited to the alveolus and buccal mucosa only and surgeon says that the plan is wide local excision with uh, neck dissection of the lymph node and pmmc graft how will you plan for anesthesia uh since the mouth opening is reduced in this patient uh and there is uh if the patient is willing uh, my first plan in first anesthesia we we'll do pre anesthesia check up dear don't jump to anesthesia you are planning yes. for elective patient so elective surgery patient may uh, and tell me the yes. what you will do in pre anesthesia check up uh yes sir and once again i will take a detailed history of the patient i will examine the airway uh, if no, there are any this, this all has been done in pac ab aage kya karoge according to the surgery ha huh? yes sir uh, all evaluation is done then i will uh, i will explain the patient about the surgery ask him if he is aware of what he is being operated for uh then i will uh, ask for due consents of the patient i will ask for adequate blood and blood products to be arranged for the surgery since it is a uh, long surgery mm-hmm. and i will uh, put a nil per olor orders overnight for the patient i will give uh, an- anxiolytic drugs in the form of tablet alprax 0.25 mg hs mm-hmm. and i will uh, give aspiration prophylaxis in the form of tablet ranitidine 150 mg hs uh since the patient is a copd patient i will ask for pre operative nebulization uh with uh, sal- uh, salbutamol and budesonide and uh apart from that uh, i will take a high risk consent in a view of the nature of the surgery and comorbidities and i will ask for arrangement of an icu bed uh, for post operative care okay so what okay so what all will you counsel the patient for for difficult intubation how will you counsel the patient yes sir i will explain to the patient that uh, in such a surgery the patient has to be made unconscious during the duration of the surgery mm-hmm. and when we make a patient unconscious we have to put a tube in his uh, uh, respiratory tube uh, to facilitate breathing Basically, during surgery we have to patients are not aware what anesthesiologists are doing are and are facing so we have to make the patient aware that we require big opening of the mouth to put the tube while you are anesthetized which is not possible in your case yes ma'am i will it is a dangerous thing that if we are not able to put the tube so for that we will not be able to fully anesthetize you but we will not let you be troubled you will be conscious with sedation i will try that you get full analgesia and amnesia but you will have to cooperate with me yes so you have to make the patient understand that this is a very important procedure for you that you have to cooperate with me and i am going to do this 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 these will be the steps that i will put a tube from your nose in before that i will prepare your airway i will give you some sprays or something so because you know it is said good counseling to the patient is half work done half of your sedation requirement is reduced if you have counseled the patient very well yes okay? so you said ki patient does not have adequate mouth opening what is yes. the criteria when you say it this much is the adequate mouth opening ma'am if there is more than 5 cm then the laryngoscopy is likely to be uh, easy 3 to 5 is also uh, considered moderately easy but less than 1 point uh, less than 2 cm is considered difficult and uh, reduced mouth opening 
fines. So now you know your patient is having restricted mouth opening of just 1.5 centimeter. You have done thorough PAC. You have arranged for blood. You have given pre medication. So you have given fasting orders also. Yes, ma'am. Nil per oral overnight. Okay. So now your patient comes uh, to OT. What is your plan for anesthesia? Yes, ma'am. Since the mouth opening is reduced and it is an elective procedure, I will uh, like to do awake fiber optic nasal intubation in this patient. So this will be your plan A to have yes. fiber optic awake nasal intubation. Should you have plan B also or no? Yes, ma'am. If uh, since this is a case of uh, anticipated difficult airway, mm. my I will keep a difficult airway card ready, and mm. if there is a uh, any uh, if i am unable to ventilate and uh, intubate so plan, I... what is plan b for you first is awake fiber optic nasal intubation what is plan b ma'am plan b is front of neck access front of neck access yes. okay okay in the form of tracheostomy and trichothyrotomy yes ma'am okay so <clears throat> now we come to Plan A. So, how will you prepare your patient for awake fiber optic intubation? What do you mean by awake fiber optic? Uh, Ma'am, in the in awake fiber optic, we have to keep the patient mildly sedated, which means that the patient uh, is is not responsive uh, to pain. So, it is no. not mildly sedated. You can say patient. It is sort of arousable sedation. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's like patient is not. Anxious, he has amnesia, he is sleeping quietly, but with good spontaneous respiration, responding to commands and commands. tone of upper respiratory muscles is not lost. Yes. Yeah, no? So arousal yes. sedation, okay. And before that? Um, uh, preparation of the patient. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, in the pre-operative area, after taking due consent and explaining the procedure to the patient, I will, uh, I would like to nebulize the patient uh, for topicalization with 4% of 4 ml lignocaine. Uh, I can also ask the patient to gargle with 2% lignocaine solution. And I Anya, can Anya, give... Anya, let us go like this. What are the nerves we are supposed to block? While we are topicalizing the airway, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, the uh, we have to uh, and we have to topicalize the airway right from the nostrils till the trachea. So first is in the nose we have the nasociliary branch of ophthalmic division of trigeminal and nasopalatine branch of uh, maxillary division of trigeminal. Basically, for and nose and for uh, anterior one third of the tongue, you have to block trigeminal. Yes, ma'am. Posterior one third of the uh, of the two tongue. Posterior two thirds. Uh, for uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Fossil pillars and tonsils we have to uh, um, and pharynx we have to uh, uh, topicalize glossopharyngeal nerve. And mm -hmm. below that, at the level of vocal cords, uh, we have to uh, topicalize the larynx, uh, the vagus nerve, in which the there is uh, internal laryngeal and Recurrent level. We are in recurrent laryngeal now. So all the PG residents, you should know the sensory supply of the airway so that you can do good topicalization. See for awake for awake intubation, you just remember the mnemonic stop S T O P. The success is S is for sedation, which is optional. T is for topicalization, O is for oxygenation, and P is for procedure. So we will talk of sedation, topicalization, oxygenation, and the procedure. So topicalization, ke liye, first we have to know the sensory nerve supply so that we can do good topicalization. Now, which local anesthetic, uh, anesthetic agent you are going to choose? Batao. I will choose uh, lignocaine. Uh, I, uh, so what with different concentrations, ma'am? Two percent and four percent. Four percent I will use. What is the safe total dose of lignocaine? 
मैम सेफ इज लेस देन नाइन पॉइंट थ्री एम जी पर के जी सेफ डोज इज नाइन दे से क्लिनिकल सिम्टम्स आफ्टर एयरवे टॉपिकलाइजेशन आर यूजली नॉट सीन अप टू नाइन पॉइंट थ्री मिलीग्राम सो यू कॉन्ट से सेफ डोज इज दिस टोटल डोज टू ट्राई टू रिस्ट्रिक्ट अप टू फाइव मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम ऑफ बॉडी वेट बट इफ रिक्वायर्ड वी कैन इंक्लूज बिकॉज क्लिनिकल सिम्टम्स आर यूजली नॉट सीन इन बिटवीन सिक्स एंड नाइन ऑल्सो सो वट एवर कंसेंट्रेशन वेर एवर यू आर यूजिंग you have to be very careful about not exceeding the total dose otherwise you will have local anesthetic toxicity okay. okay number 1 is this then you should know what are the ways of topicalization of the airway either you can topic bata do you tell me hmm. ma'am topicalization uh, can be we have various ways to topicalize the patient uh, we have we can give nebulization we can ask for gargling we can put cotton swabs or pledgets then uh, we can uh, give uh, airway blocks and we can give spray as you go technique while doing fiber optic with airway blocks we can which are the airway blocks you know yes ma'am there is super, superior laryngeal nerve block transtracheal block and glossopharyngeal nerve block superior uh, laryng in superior laryngeal nerve block Yeah, on the uh, greater uh, border of uh, hyoid, we will we will palpate the hyoid first, and then on the lateral border of hyoid, we will use a twenty-two gauge needle with two uh, percent of lignocaine, a uh, three two to three ml, and uh, we will uh, as soon as we uh, as soon as we uh, just below the uh, hyoid. greater corneal of the hyoid pe we go to the yes. inferior surface and just slip the needle beneath the inferior corneal and yes, we deposit as we aspirate of... if there is nothing we will give 2 to 3 cc and then we will repeat the same on the other side and uh, mm -hmm. in transtracheal ma'am we will uh, palpate the cricothyroid membrane mm -hmm. uh, which is an indentation when we are tracing along the uh, neck along the trachea mm -hmm. and as soon as we feel that uh, we will again use a 22 gauge needle to uh, go in and uh, uh, as soon as we feel air and flopping of the membrane uh, we will give the we will aspirate and then give the drug okay so you said we can nebulize which will take care of your nasal cavity also oropharynx nasopharynx also but the disadvantage is some is lost in the atmosphere some goes to the lung no it was not required but this is one way another way is giving the blocks hai na yes, for blocks um, uh, there should be expertise in the block yes. then a patient can anatomy should be such that we can give the block suppose there is a big tumor in the neck or there is contracture neck we won't be able to give and then yes. there is even more chances of toxicity with the blocks because you are working in the co close proximity of the vessels blood vessels Ha huh. another thing is sago yes, you spray as you go while you are doing fiber optic intubation yes sir okay yes sir uh, have you ever heard of sago technique dr ananya yes ma'am i have seen sago technique in my office okay so these are the all ways of topicalization you have to always take care of total you should not be exceeding the total dose okay and if you are trying block in today's era it is better if you do ultrasound assisted blocks yes so the way do topicalization and how do you know that your topicalization is good or not is there any way you can test it should you or shouldn't you ma'am we should check so uh, we should test but we should always make it atraumatic 
and we can use a small suction catheter to check if the uh, airway has been topicalized well very good you we can uh, use a soft catheter which will uh, test whether it has been topicalized and whether the cuff reflex and gag reflex has been suppressed or not okay if yeah. it is not then we can supplement with some other way by nebulization or spray okay so when you use xylophen spray for oropharynx what percentage yes, of lidocaine do you use ma'am in the spray we have uh, 10% uh, lignocaine and each spray How gives many? 10 mg each spray is giving 10 mg of lignocaine okay each spray gives 0.1 ml which is uh, equivalent to 10 mg of lidocaine we should know all these things to know how much we are giving every time so you have done topicalization okay anything else you would like to do because you are doing awake nasal fiber optic intubation will you like to prepare nasal cavity for something else also would yes, you like to put some vasoconstrict yes ma'am after assessing mm -hmm. uh, the patent nasal we will first assess which side is more patent and then we will uh, mm -hmm. give I will give oxymetazole in sprays or in the nasal cavity, uh, because it uh, so that it has it causes vaso constriction. Spray is not available. Okay, if spray is not available, we can even put the drops. Drops. Whatever is available, but we would like to do vaso constriction there. Okay, so you have uh, done all this. Now, how will you prepare your OT? Yes, ma'am. Uh, after. Uh, normal checking of the anesthesia workstation the table uh, and monitors i will prepare the fiber optic i will check the fiber optic first i will check so the light you, sorry ananya all this actually you should do before bringing the patient to ot you will prepare yes. the ot no? yes the preparation of ot i think we will be short of time so i leave uh, preparation of ot difficult the airway cart and all all the pg students must be knowing so we will focus more on awake fiber optic intubation in this session so yes, okay you have topicalization now you said you will like to give arousable sedation to your patient yes, what should be the properties of sedative to produce arousable sedation uh, ma'am i first i will give uh, i will give a benzodiazepine mid iv midazolam uh, one mg it should be short acting okay, it should yes, be sir. easily reversible it should not be causing respiratory depression depression yes sir and yes, these, these are all things we want it should be easily reversible suppose there is overdose and we are not able to intubate we should be able to reverse, reverse the patient yes, so sir. the preferred sedation are yes ma'am midazolam midazolam ma'am uh, fentanyl fentanyl remifentanyl And uh, dex made it to medine. Mm -hmm. These are good sedation for sedation. Yes, and uh, they say you can use pro pro propofol, but not as bolus as infusion. Infusion. Yes, okay. Yes, because in bolus it will cause apnea and respiratory depression. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me begin. So you have given sedation to your patient. you uh, you have chosen the sedative for your patient you have uh, topicalized the patient what you will start the patient with after giving topic. midazolam and fent after giving midazolam and fentanyl ma'am i will start with dexmedazolidine give loading book before sorry even before giving sedative oxygenation i will give start with yes ma'am hmm. ma'am i will attach all uh, routine monitors like nibp ecg pulse oximeter i will then start to pre oxygenate the patient uh, i will then uh, my check i will keep my bronchoscope checked and ready with a with an epidural catheter for spray as you go in the working port i will then connect the oxygen in the suction part of it and i will uh, start uh, progressing my fiber optic probe just a minute what is the end point of your pre oxygenation Uh, Ma'am, if FeO two is more than ninety uh, percent, three minutes, and if we don't have adequate uh, time of three minutes, then we can give uh, a small. 
we have to have adequate time of 3 minutes why will we not have adequate time of 3 minutes ananya it is open <laughs> surgery it is elective surgery your patient is uh, difficult intubation how can you say ki i don't have 3 minutes for proper pre oxygenation ye to kahi bleeding ke patient ke bhag nahi raha hai na don't say that yes ma'am yes, fio to more than 90% and 3 minutes the other way around even if in 3 minutes FeO2 does not come to 90. You can pre-oxygenate for more time. Yes. Okay. So pre-oxygenation and para-oxygenation are two important parts of managing difficult airway. Always remember, pre good pre-oxygenation and para-oxygenation throughout the procedure. Keep on oxygenating the patient by some route. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now. You have started pre-oxygenation. You have reached the end point. How much midazolam will you give? Ma'am, point uh, five to one mg. I will give IV slowly. Okay. And how much dexmed? Ma'am, uh, loading dose. I will give one mic per kg over ten minutes. One microgram one per kg micro over ten one minutes. One microgram is one microgram is the highest point. You can start with a smaller dose, point five microgram. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, then okay. I will start maintenance dose of point five microgram per kg per. Okay, yeah. and then okay, then you will go for fiber optic nasal. Yes, okay, steps. First, first you will go into the nasal cavity. Then, uh, ma'am, then I will direct uh, it towards the to the nasal pharynx, uh, and the oral pharynx. Then I will see. The epiglottis. Right. I will see the glottic opening. When I see the glottic opening, I will see the percentage of glottic opening which I can see, the uh, Pogo score, and uh, then I will uh, slowly take the while I, at the epiglottis, just below the epiglottis, in before the vocal cord, I will uh, give four uh, mL of a uh, two percent lignocaine. Okay, and so I, I will wait it. for yes, ma'am. I will wait for thirty seconds. Then I will progress beyond the vocal cords. Then again, I will uh, give lignocaine. Uh, as I will, then I uh, I will progress to the uh, and uh, then I will negotiate my tube on top of the uh, which will already be uh, loaded. I will negotiate it on top of the uh, fiber optic. Uh, And uh, as soon as it reaches the carina, then I will negotiate it below and leave it at the carina of the trachea. Yeah. No, no. And then you, you don't have to reach carina ever. Okay, you have to carina. But yeah, you have to be little away from the carina. Neither your fiber optic nor your tube should just touch carina. Okay, and tube ka you have to do two point check of tube. Yes, ma'am. One is we will the see the probe. Okay. Yes, ma'am. With the caprograph. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, so Ananya, this was very good that you were able to uh, put it in first go. Suppose you are not able to put it. How many attempts can you take? What you will do if you are not able to put in first go? पहली बात तो. Ma'am, we will call for help. Uh, so we will always call, call for help. Yes, ma'am. So, how yes. many attempts are permitted as per the Airway Society? Ma'am, two to three attempts by senior anesthesiologist. With experience. Three attempts plus one plus with the most experienced most person. Most experienced, yes, ma'am. So you you can have these many attempts. Yes, ma'am. So suppose suppose we are not able to do it, then. Ah, uh, ma'am, we will keep oxygenating the patient. Ah, uh, as we are able to ventilate in this case, we will ventilate the patient, and ah, uh, then we will have to go for front of neck axis. We will go ah. Uh, Yes, we will go for okay. emergency cricothyroid. But it will not be emergency. Yeah, no. Uh -huh. so yes, ma'am. If, if sir, there is no emergency, we can bring the patient out and we can postpone the surgery for that point of time and we can plan with surgical surgery. Surgical surgery. Okay. If you are experienced person, think that I will be able to pass the video laryngoscope ka blade through this one point five centimeter opening only the blade, and I will negotiate. The, you can combine two techniques also depending on your own expertise. 
so yeah. even the senior people they can combine like putting the video laryngoscope blade and then negotiate trying to negotiate the fiber optic but yeah. in your patient putting the video laryngoscope blade may not be that useful because if swelling starts bleeding then you can't yeah. perform fiber optic that is another challenge we have in this patient so we will have we have to be prepared with this okay Arun, hmm. uh, Ananya, just for clarification, can you just uh, re let us recapitulate what all percentages of local anesthetic you have used for the topicalization? Yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. For nebulization, I have used four percent of four ml uh, lignocaine, which has uh, given me one sixty milligrams of lignocaine. And uh, for the oropharyngeal spray, I have used ten percent. Uh, lignocaine spray and for spray as you go technique i have used 2% okay. and uh, can you uh, tell us what percentages are we using for the blocks also ma'am uh, we can use 2% for that as well for the transtracheal we can also use 4% now yeah. uh, 4% then you can give just 2 cc then 2 cc yes Okay. Which tube you will load? PVC tube or flexometallic tube? Ma'am, flexometallic tube. We will use a reinforced tube because uh, we are sharing the airway with the uh, surgeon. So there are chances of thinking and also negotiation through fiber optic is easier for uh, reinforced tube. So your, your challenges in this case was difficult intubation, surgeon sharing the same place where you are working and uh, immunocompromised patients and post-operative also they are going to take flap it is a long surgery so would you like to extubate your patient here or would you like to keep the patient uh, intubated for one day what is your plan uh, ma'am as the uh, surgical uh, area of operation is also same as airway so I would like to keep the patient intubated overnight uh, and give him a uh, steroid cover so that the airway edema reduces by next morning and we can plan a due excavation. Your reason for keeping the patient uh, on ventilator is, I, I'm not uh, agreeing to that. So no, also long, there's a long call. Because yes, <laughs> there is a flap made, so you want to give rest to that part to the patient because that flap is going from the chest to the mandible and there yes, will be a lot of uh, glottis edema not they are not working on the same so we want to give rest to that part that's why we want we would uh, uh, like to keep the patient overnight on the ventilator uh, so uh, what are the Precautions we have to take while extubating these patients of difficult intubation. Though this patient now will have good mouth opening, I think. What are the precautions you are taking for difficult intubation extubation? Ma'am, uh, we will keep a difficult airway cart ready in the ICU. Uh, we will also yeah. keep, uh, we have to be prepared for re intubating the patient. We will adequately oxygenate the patient uh, with 100% oxygen just before excavating. Uh, and uh, we will ensure that uh, we give IV dexamethasone so that all the edema is settled and we you can, can use easily... tube exchanger. You can, you can use tube exchanger, bougies. Right. No? Yes, ma'am. You can. Uh, and suppose your patient's mouth opening was, say, about. Uh, two two point five centimeters. Yes, Maybe your plan B would have changed, ma'am. Yet uh, I would change my plan B to ma'am supraglottic intubating LMA, or I would use a uh, any other supraglottic as a conduit for passing fiber optic. Okay, because then you. Uh, okay, which supraglottic uh, air, airway device you would prefer? Ma'am, I can use Proceal, I can use Intubating LMA, and I can also use uh, IGEL. Uh, you can use IGEL or even LMA stream, you are able to pass through a very small opening. Yes. But Ananya, is your plan B correct for this case? 
मैम इज आस्किंग अबाउट दिस केस ओनली ना कि लाइक टू फॉर नेजर सर्जरी नो नो इन इन दिस केस वी हैव टू गो फॉर नेजर सो इफ देयर इज अबाउट ओपनिंग मोर देन 2.5 मैम वी कैन यूज अ वीडियो लैरिंगोस्कोप एंड गाइड अ नेजल इंटूबेशन uh we can use uh, forceps to guide a nasal intubation uh we can also use uh, burman oral airway if it does not uh, but very carefully so as to not harm the ulcer and we can uh, use no not the uh, and even if she is able to pass oral tube with the help of supraglottic device parul she can rail uh, she can bring it out by railroading method yes, so the Yes. It would be better that she uses the scope first to try the nasal only, and then plan C could be the supraglottic. Yes. And uh, uh, regarding blood transfusion, anything special in these cases? Yes, ma'am. Uh, because these patients are immunocompromised uh, as uh, cancer patients, so uh, we we would like, and there are chances of more blood loss. So when there is blood loss, we would like to give. irradiated blood or leukocyte depleted blood so as to prevent immunological reaction okay okay so your patient had a restricted mouth opening uh, ananya was that mm-hmm. due to tobacco chewing and smoking or it is post uh, this ulcer Ma'am, in this particular patient, tobacco is more likely reason for because he has been chewing tobacco for thirty years. So, what is uh, the reason for uh, Christmas in tobacco chewers? Ma'am, there is uh, some mucus fibrosis in tobacco uh, chewers, fibrosis. which causes. Yes, there is some mucus fibrosis. Okay. Uh, I think anything else, Parul. you want to ask uh, ma'am uh, just to emphasize that what ma'am has told the stop please be very clear what you are using for s what for t and what for o all these three will be responsible for your successful uh, fiber optic pr- procedure so o uh, uh, is something which uh, you can either give with fiber optic or other ways that ananya you can tell you can give the oxygenation to the patient yes ma'am para oxygenation ma'am. Yes, ma'am. For para oxygenation, if we are uh, intubating orally, we can give nasal can a nasal cannula. But in this patient, since we can't do that, we can put a nasopharyngeal air- airway in the second uh, nostril and connect oxygen to that. And apart from that, we can connect oxygen to the suction port on the fiber optic. Okay. Thank you, Ananya. Ananya, can you show those uh, slides which we have given fast? Parul, you can talk on. Yes, ma'am. I'll start. Just, we'll just show you three, four slides for the benefit of the PG to just uh, emphasize on few important things like smoking. How does it affect? When should we stop? Ask the patient to stop smoking, and what are the guidelines for topicalization? And but just three, four slides, which will take five minutes. Ah, uh, Ananya, show those slides. Ma'am, I just I have just received them. Just one second. If not, then it is fine. Ma'am, I have also shared with uh, Dr. Nishan sir the number I was given. Dr. Nishan, can you please show those slides? Just a minute, ma'am. <clears throat> till the time uh, we can take a few questions from the chat box so the one question is already covered dr parul covered it the concentration used for airway blocks so uh, ananya told 2% the next question is pogo is it laryngoscopic view or bronchoscopic view mm, parul take this question mam uh, pogo view is generally a laryngoscopic view but uh, uh since uh, pogo score is uh, either on video laryngoscope or a laryngoscopic view it's not just first to say for a bronchoscopic yeah is this the one yes sir yes parul we just rush through yes, 
okay uh, so we'll just be briefly telling you about uh, two or three major topics uh, first we will be emphasizing on the effects of smoking and what why we have emphasized on the cessation so smoking basically uh, is uh, consists of the gaseous and particulate matter why i am telling you is the main effects of on the on the body is because of these particulate and gaseous matter so the main gaseous component is carbon monoxide so as we can, as we know carbon monoxide has very high affinity for hemoglobin so it binds to hemoglobin to form carboxy hemoglobin so a patient who is smoking will have high concentrations of carboxy hemoglobin this itself has a very high affinity for hemoglobin that is 300 times more than oxygen similarly this carboxy hemoglobin is also responsible for the left shift of the oxygen dissociation curve so patients who are smoking do experience tissue hypoxia because of this component other things that is the particulate matter which is mainly consistent of nicotine so nicotine is a stimulant agent which basically acts through receptors like acetylcholine receptors and it is responsible for the stimulant effects like tachyarrhythmias um, it has cardiovascular effects now what uh, the emphasis is also on other chemical which can be either gaseous or the tar agent so uh, the gaseous uh, has many uh, points that is polycyclic hydrocarbons nitrosamines aromatic amines all these are responsible for the effects like narrowing of the small airways the mucus hypersecretion and inhibitory uh, and decreasing the ciliary action these are responsible for suppression of immune system because of which these patients are more prone to uh, certain infections as well as car cancers and as these all are stimul uh, are carcinogens in their own way so basically a patient smoking comes to you what we need to do is we ask the patient to stop smoking immediately so one would say why should uh, if the patient is smoking for past 30 40 years why will one day of smoking help us so by this next slide we will show you that uh, in the uh, duration of uh, time course of stopping the smoking and the beneficial effect it has on the system so as as less as 12 to 24 hours if you ask your patient to stop smoking there will be decrease in the carbon monoxide and nicotine levels this has been shown to increase the perioperative morbidity mortality of patients so whenever in psc you are asked you getting a patient you should ask them to stop smoking and this uh, uh, smoking cessation like for 1 to 2 weeks has been associated with normalization of uh, levels as uh, carboxy hemoglobin levels as well as decreased sputum production ideally it should be stopped 6 to 8 weeks to bring back the immune functions and metabolisms to normal restoring all the airway activity so these patients uh, it is important that you know what what advantages of smoking cessation uh, also Next. since we Uh, since we have been discussing about the local anesthetic so i would be very briefly telling about you uh, telling you about the local anesthetic systemic toxicity this is very important to know as we have, as at times with the topicalization we are little casual and we tend to give extra dose and we do not realize that the patient has started having symptoms so what we need to know is what are the risk factors for local anesthetic toxicity we have discussed the local anesthetic type and the dose of the local anesthetic so there are different local anesthetic which are more toxic as compared to less i'll be telling you about that and the dose we have already discussed also what is important is the block we which you are giving if uh, like uh, topicalization is a different technique we use a lot of blocks to so site of block is also very important how uh, you are conducting that is uh, it, by whether it is by ultrasound whether it is a blind block whether you are giving a single bolus dose or you are giving a continuous infusion dose uh so basically all these risk factors uh, and patient factors which is very important like in extremes of age that is elderly and pediatric age group you have to be very cautious and use lower doses patients with cardiovascular renal or hepatic dysfunctions and in pregnant patients also uh, there is uh, increased sensitivity and therefore local anesthetic doses should be less so these are the risk factors uh what what is the reason for this toxicity uh, we will uh, i'll not be getting into detail of lo local anesthetic mechanism for toxicity but i'll just inform that there is a ccns ratio that is the uh, it de uh, defines the amount of drug that is required to cause the cardiovascular collapse as compared to the dose required to produce seizures so a drug which has a higher ratio that is that is it uh, it those of more doses required will be a uh, have a greater margin of safety 
so as we know we are using maximum lignocaine here uh, we told it has a ccns ratio of 7 so once you uh, are administering any local anesthetic what you have to be very cautious is to monitor the patient continuously even if you uh, if if you uh, catch hold of the initial symptoms it is very important to prevent this so what are the initial symptoms it generally starts with the cns symptoms there is uh, first there is cns excitation which can present as perioral numbness tinnitus light headedness muscle visual disturbances some much muscle twitches twitches that you can so see and then eventually there is cns depression which can be associated with unconsciousness convulsions respiratory depression uh, cvs uh, toxicity is um, it can be either uh, uh, immediately after giving the local anesthetic or it can also present up till 1 hour of giving local anesthetic so whenever we are using that amount of local anesthetic we have to be very cautious to monitor these patient initially there is generally tachycardia and hypertension which is followed by bradycardia hypotension and eventually myocardial depression and ventricular arrest so uh, knowing the symptoms and the risk factors last is one disease which uh, one condition which you do not want to have so prevention is the best measure there are a uh, few considerations that you should keep in mind to prevent it that is using the lowest effective dose as we have discussed here also that maximum dose can be 9 but safe dose is 5 so wherever possible use the lowest effective dose to achieve the effect always give slow incremental injections do not give a bolus dose without multiple aspirations and wherever possible utilizing a usg has been proven to decrease the incidence of last uh in very short once you have identified last i'll be telling you the management of local anesthetic systemic toxicity if you identify the local anesthetic toxicity and if you are still in uh, midway administering the local anesthetic first step is to stop the administration call for help simultaneously so the three pillars of managing last is uh, managing the seizures the acls and then you have the lipid emulsion therapy so uh, seizure pro, uh, seizures uh, for seizure uh, management you, we can use midazolam simultaneously you will start the ventilation depending upon the patient condition mostly these patient will require intubation and uh, life life support initiate the cardiovascular life support protocols and also they have said that you should alert the nearest cardio pulmonary bypass facility meanwhile while you are doing all this you should always wherever you are using large amounts of local anesthetic the ot should have a lipid emulsion which is 20% and the initial bolus dose as we can see is 1.5 ml per kg this bolus dose is followed by an infusion of 0.25 ml per kg per minute which comes out to be approximately 15 ml per kg per hour after giving this within 5 to 10 minutes you have to simultaneously assess the patient while maintaining the life support that uh, assess for whether the cardiovascular stability has returned with some hypotension or it is still unstable when the, it is still unstable you can repeat a bolus of 1.5 ml per kg up till three maximum doses and if the patient uh, has hypotension you can uh, double the infusion to maintain the stability up to 0.5 ml per kg per minute this cardiovascular stability once achieved the infusion should be continued up to and you should monitor the patient and the maximum dose of uh, lipid emulsion that you can use is 12 mg per kg so uh, this also has a maximum dose i would just like to highlight one point that in the acls algorithm here in last you do not use the same epinephrine dose as we are using in the acls it is generally less than 1 microgram per kg and also there is no role please do not use uh, lignocaine for any arrhythmias in a patient where you are treating the patient for last so here are the ergonomics for uh, awake tracheal intubation i would say awake tracheal intubation good preparation of the patient good pre uh, preparation of the setup and equipment 80% of the problem is done so we should all be at such positions that I, uh, you can go through this later on like Where where the operator should be standing if patient is in the sitting position and where the operation second picture is where the operator and other things should be when patient is in lying down position so that operator can operator should always be able to see the patient the video screen and the patient monitor so this is very important next slide please. 
so what we were talking of stop again i will reiterate pg sedation topicalize oxygenate and perform remember these things stop you have to sedate the patient you have to topicalize you have to oxygenate and you have to perform next so if there are problems what you are supposed to do suppose while oxygenating you are not able to maintain oxygenation try to clear the obstruction reverse or reduce the sedation increase fio2 or we have to change the mode of oxygen delivery if your topicalization is not good we can do additional topicalization now they say ki if it is not good you can even give up to 9 mg per kg and but you should be knowing the management of local anesthetic toxicity if patient is anxious and not sedated properly we can review our sedation regime or if patient is over sedated we can consider the reversal agent for midazolam fentanyl while performing the fiber optic intubation or video laryngoscopic intubation whatever way it is we have to limit our attempts not more than 3 plus 1 from the most expert person available we can always abandon the procedure in elective or even in the emergency if surgeon permits do proper suction after first or second attempts you can try for alternate route or device we can try to change the tracheal tube type and call for more experienced help this is what we would like to say and here we have given the dose and duration action for the drugs to be used during awake intubation whether uh, nasotracheal intubation or orotracheal whether video laryngoscopic or fiber optic these are the drugs which are to be used that's all from our side this is management for unsuccessful atia chalvo that we will leave any questions there are few questions in the chat box uh, only a few so one is uh, dr vaishali has added uh, that just to add for continuous oxygenation thrive or hfno can be used yes. Yes, yes, it is a very good dry uh, uh, device. If someone has try for HFNO, one can use it. Very right, I agree. Or simple fifteen liters of oxygen from the auxiliary port. Hmm. Okay. So there is one more question: How do you railroad oral tube to nasal route? we can do like uh, it. It requires some expertise if someone has done it before. like uh, i am uh, doing it just uh, from the nasal tube i have put one uh, esophageal airway and then oral tube is taken inside it is uh, either stitched or fixed properly in that nasopharyngeal airway and you can pull it out of course there are risk of trauma and all those things but these are things which can be done putting a nasopharyngeal airway from the nostril putting the tube from the oropharynx and it will be definitely a smaller size tube and then taking it out from the nostril with adequate lubrication to move the connector and we tie it to the nasopharyngeal airway and pull it out connector ni connector has to be done later on we will Hello. remove the connector with the connector you can never bring it out from the right to the tube and we pull it out through the nose Uh, that like we are doing gel coating for drives to number 6 to 6.5 to in emergency situation um i have a question from the admin what's the normal level of carboxy hemoglobin uh par Ma'am, uh, it is uh, yeah, it is uh, normally uh, it is set in percentages also, but uh, in parts per million, around thirty to thirty-five is considered to be normal, which is generally less than less than five percent if we are talking about smokers. Are there any more questions from the audience? You can raise your hand or you can write in the chat box. i think that it was such an elaborate exhaustive and well explained session probably nothing more is left for airway 
there's one question any role of elective tracheostomy okay elective tracheostomy i would say we should always first try awake intubation if you fail then only you should go in for because that is see the uh, i think the absolute indication for uh, abs absolute contraindication for fiber awake intubation is patient refusal or sensitivity to local anesthetic if such are the situations then we should go in for tracheostomy otherwise we should always first try awake fiber optic or if possible video laryngoscopic if mouth opening is more these options then only we should uh, go for some invasive procedure because it is not upper airway obstruction that we won't be able to manage without tracheostomy those are the conditions where we know we won't be able to manage without the tracheostomy Uh, One more question: Can we do nasal intubation over a boogie? Of course, we can do, but that I think you require a lot of expertise for that. Oral intubation over boogie we can do, but nasal ke liye a little bit because uh, while going through the nostril, if we uh, disturb the boogie, it can be displaced. If we can manage it, I why why can't we do it? We can do it. But ma'am, um, ma'am, uh, regarding this one, nasal intubation invariably it is traumatic. We are already having a compromised airway because of the oral carcinoma. I think better to avoid the nasal intubation, or if you want to go for a over a bougie rather than go for the fiber optic, so that you avoid a minimum. So fiber problem. optic is if fiber optic is not available in some sector. Yeah, I, I think better to because airway is getting compromised already with the lesion there, na, in the oral cavity. Bleeding occurs, then it become a panic situation sometimes. Hmm. Uh, that is the reason that awake fiber optic is the one and one of the most common indication is the expert who can do uh, perform the awake love the fiber optic. So if it can be done with the good preparation, it should be the first uh, approach. I think uh, because these patients are already immunocompromised, psychologically down. Uh, even if the awake also, you require a lot of cooperation, a very good communication skills from the attending anesthesiologist. It should be done at a center where you are regularly doing communicating with the patient. Have a system, have a, whatever the resources are there, good for the patient. Patient should be in a good confidence when we are going for all these procedures of airway management, rather than. Just experimenting them in our own setup, where we no, may not be having doing them regularly. Yes, and a good uh, communication between the surgeon, patient, and anesthesiologist yeah. together, putting so much of confidence into the patient that yes, we are there to take care of you. We just have to cooperate. It is mentioned in that Airway Society journal that good communication at times require no sedation at all. Only topicalization, and you can also you have to basically counsel the patient very well. Okay. So next question is from Doctor Ansu S S Kotia. Any experience with retrograde intubation? I personally have never uh, done that in my career of forty years, but yes, theoretically it does exist. Uh, Doctor uh, Subha has suggested that patients should be asked for bleeding from ulcer as it is an obstacle for fiber optic bronchoscopy. Your that comment? Why we uh, so we asked Doctor Ananya that while examining the ulcer, you should be talking of inspection, making what the floor is, whether it is covered with any slough or blood. Definitely, we should know. Because if there is bleeding in the airway, fiber optic can never be successful. And I think, ma'am, while we are doing the pre-operative evaluation, it's always better to have a senior surgeon who's going to operate about the floor, about the tissues involved, about the possible, you know, the friction between the endotracheal tube or instrumentation, whatever we're going to use for the airway securing. I think that should be very well matched with the surgeons in isolation before we communicate to the patient about the possible risk of bleeding and compromise airway during the anesthesia and surgery. I think uh, uh, we have changing times. 
rather than doing a pre anesthetic evaluation in isolated room it's always better to have a surgeon also long with the surgeon yeah yeah in our setup we are doing like that only anesthesiologist and onco surgeon together they examine the ulcer before taking up the patient to check for how the swelling is like onco surgeon keeps on telling you see it is bleeding to touch it is fragile and all those things dr gohar um, has asked for recording of the session deepak it will be available on isa nhq at youtube na it will be available after the recording is finished this uh, session finishes it will be available on the isa nhq channel youtube channel okay sir uh one has asked for blind nasal intubation and its troubleshooting if deemed appropriate here already we have i think we have discussed that yes sir blind nasal intubation as per the guidelines of uh, difficult airway society we should these days we should not do blind nasal intubation even as the rescue it can be uh, awake intubation fiber optic video laryngoscope or fona but blind nasal intubation as per the latest guidelines has no place for difficult intubation and these guidelines can incriminate you in the court of law also because uh, with the onco surgery especially posted in a center where the facility should be available there will be no excuse in the court of law when you do this thing and a complication comes to support your cause because they will ask whether if you didn't have any facility so why you proceeded with such surgeries and anesthesia so yeah. i think it's better uh, for such patient these are uh, the way we have got the super specialties and sub specialties similarly the surgical the surgical load should be handled by the particular hospital or setup where we have got the extreme facilities to handle the patient as well as the complication associated with such procedures rather than attempting to glorify our thing or to, for a personal gain in the private practice also it's better to leave this patient to a specialized center only latest task guidelines does not allow us to do blind intubation also the timing of extubation how to plan which is very important for all difficult intubation patients dr parvez has suggested that tracheostomy should be should always be standby so it is definitely true Yes, I agree to this idea because uh, generally, generally for difficult intubations, what the practice is, we telephone the, I mean, we we can pre-inform the ENT surgeons that though we are going ahead with this, but if you required, you should be ready. And tracheostomy tray is always there in OT. We send a call to them because uh, in elective cases we don't try. We might take time in doing all that, even percutaneous tracheostomy. So ENT surgeon is always informed. whenever we are doing any such procedure that if required but elective surgery me one thing is until unless your oxygenation is not possible we should before tracheostomy we should make the patient awake and that can be uh, uh, for, because this is elective surgery we can make the patient out we can stop the things we should only go for emergency tracheostomy if we are not able to oxygenate or surgeon says you know it has to be done there is some problem not oral cancer for any other case rather ma'am i think in these cases the real chaos and panic can come when these patient for the presenting for the emergency surgery during night for any lesion and the person who the senior most i think is a senior resident on duty majority of the institutions or sometime even a third year pg resident then comes a real time of testing of your skills and your knowledge and uh, your uh, administration and management i think uh, the branch has progressed so much the teaching is so good nowadays in anesthesiology that a third year resident is capable of handling such situation but still i think the consultants on call are always there whenever such cases present for emergency surgery do not take it a challenge to manage that patient individually rather involve your seniors here take their advice because they have seen the life so much they have seen these cases so many times they will give you exact advice or if required they will come also and i think always better to have two to three persons rather than attempting on yourself to manage such patient during emergency for whatever trauma they come or whatever possible cause they come 
if the trauma is doing will involving the airway plus oral lesion it become a double challenge for them i think our residents are good enough the teaching is good in all the institution nowadays in anesthesiology yes, almost students are doing very good but doctor yes. i think on our part as a senior people now we should make at least video laryngoscopes available yeah. everywhere during emergency situations uh, so i think we are working on that i think in within the next one year isa may come out with the, this one recommendations that even for the mm. private practice also it's not that costly to buy we had a discussion in the last okay. series also about the video laryngoscopes it's a very good tool to have with you because it can act as a second assistant and a senior to you when you are doing the intubation in a difficult airway you may save many lives and just have to spend a few pennies on it and it's a lifetime investment whatever the things are the other parts electronic gadgets they get uh, you know deteriorated after a long time 2 3 3 4 or 4 years but they will give you a good uh, output for your investment even the We use of fiber optic even the use of fiber optic has been reduced tremendously after yeah. video laryngoscopes fiber optic one disadvantage was because of the cost involved in that the plus the maintenance plus everything cost, maintenance expertise expertise Everything. also the learning curve was very high learning you require a lot of high. days to learn and you require a good teacher to teach you uh, to learn faster by video laryngoscope i think within 3 4 laryngoscopies you will be able to reach yes. a level where you can save the life of a patient are there any more questions the audience can raise their hands and ask questions i think majority of the answers have been well taken by the ananya and uh, ananya and her teachers the teachers have done a wonderful job in making her you know uh, confident to answer everything she is a good girl she had prepared herself and uh, ha i must congratulate had... ananya to be so well prepared for... uh, am i audible yeah am i audible dr anshu yeah. is good yeah good evening everyone good excellent evening. presentation i would just like to add that uh, video laryngoscope and fiber optic bronchoscopes they are not for emergency situations please can i uh, just anybody agrees with me the video laryngoscope is there for emergency situation dr anshu madam uh, video uh, laryngoscope uh, can be used anywhere in emer rather it will be more helpful in emergency yes. where no one is along with I, you i have just used it once in a small baby with vsd and uh, she was reintubated so that was the only time it was used because it takes time it takes time to you know fix in everything especially the megrath we have got megrath with us no if you use uh, cmac it yeah. is so so convenient to yes, use yes. it is just yes, like cmac is definitely i agree Very definitely good. i agree for cmac but we have to have a good technician who assembles everything and gives it in an emergency situation cmac yeah. you don't even uh, require that yeah everything is lying on the trolley you can yourself use it uh maybe you, you assemble it maybe you assemble it in unanticipated difficult unanticipated difficult i still uh, a couple of views i would like to please invite madam uh, anshu madam did you use that video laryngo for the first time in your life for that emergency no it was for the a... third or fourth time it was yes, in portis a long back in portis hospital ma i used yeah. it in a the pediatric cardiologist called me pet uh, ctv surgeon and the patient ma was already operated by the pediatric ctv dr sunil kaushal so he just called me and i used it and it went straight away but still i feel that uh, i mean these devices are ma more anticipated i understood your point ma'am the reason is when you use these devices it takes some time for you to have a good hand on these the use of these thing the Definitely. learning curve the time shortage of assembling everything it takes time ma'am i'm talking about technique technique you can develop in 3 4 video laryngoscopes but yes when yes you use it on regular patients in elective also till you use in elective yes. you will never uh, have advantage in the emergency you first have to get your hand on it ex in expert manner in the elective surgeries so once you are ex Expert, get expert with it. You can use an emergency also. Straight away by using an emergency, I'm definitely inviting a disaster also. Yes, exactly. This is what I wanted to tell. Otherwise, I've been doing it, and now I'm faculty also in teaching both these things. They yesterday only we did ACE ventilation day before yesterday, but that is that I just wanted to know the views of all of you, esteemed uh, you know speakers. Yeah, I wanted to know the point. view. 
Ma'am, good point. Actually, this point, uh, the message goes like that. Don't keep the video laryngoscope ready for any emergency surgery rather than before using oh. it in elective surgery. Yes. Always, yes. always get experience with it. Sorry? Ma'am, always, always get experience with the video laryngoscope in elective Definitely. surgeries so that you Definitely. can use it comfortably during the emergency surgery. Emergency so situation. Message. Yes. Good message to everyone. Thank okay. you, Madam. Thank, Thank you so much. Friend. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you. Sir, as there are no Good questions, uh, uh, should we close the question answer session? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's up to you. Josna and Deep Dr. Deepak, you both are the in charge today. But I think before closing, I will like to felicitate so, our people there who have done a wonderful job today. Just give me uh, two, three seconds. Uh, Vajwa sir to do the present the certificates to our faculty, the PG and the coordinators. Uh, Dr. Madhu Gupta, ma'am, thank you for you. making this class as in charge of the entire class. So this is our small token of respect from our side, from the national headquarters. Dr. Bhimeshwar, myself and Dr. Bajwa presenting on the behalf of the program coordinators also. Then uh, next is just wait. Thank you, Dr. Bajwa, for giving this opportunity to team ESI, PGI, MSR. Thank you so much. Well, always thank welcome, ma'am. Dr. Parul, uh, thank you. Uh, Madam Madhu Gupta was very much right in promoting you and telling good things about you. I think you have lived up to all those uh, wordings and expectations. Thank you very thank much, you Dr. So much, Parul. Sir. Thank you so much for your appreciation. Ananya. You are equally good. You have almost, uh, you know, have, rather you have, the way you have answered, you have felicitated your teachers today. The way you have answered about everything. So, True. really nice. Really nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. Deepak, so nice to have you today here. It was also your first exposure. I think you will keep doing well in the coming days. Thank you, Dr. Deepak. And as our senior facilitator, Dr. Josna, she is always good into these things and she can handle anything. So, Dr. Josna, thank you very much. Thank you so much, thank sir. You. Thank you, Dr. Josna and Dr. Deepak for helping us. And thank, thank you, you our, this one, Dr. Nishan, Dr. Madhuri and all those program coordinators. Anyone want to suggest something or give a suggestion, they can always raise their hand and before we close it. Sir, your gold, gold question. Gold question, actually, I'm uh, actually getting uh, the problem is with that they have already NMC has, you know, the barred the companies to sponsor the conferences. So I'm saving all my gold for the conferences now <laughs> so that I can spend the money there on the conferences from the gold. gold. I can't give it to PGs. The conference has to be done. So saving all the gold for the conferences. You have got a national conference coming up in November at Gurgaon. So you require a lot of money for that. If the Indian government doesn't help, so we have to help ourselves. Anybody else want to say something before we close down? Uh, I think Dr. Bajwa, I've got a suggestion. Yeah. Um, if you feel appropriate, decide accordingly and uh, we can invite uh, the good presenter, the student to the national conference also. You take a decision on that. Uh, actually, the problem with me is here, I cannot decide. Every student is a good presenter, whosoever has presented till date. Somehow, you know, it's a very difficult to judge who is the best. Every student, either second year or third year. Uh, rather, my... uh, hello, sir. I... I just want to ask, if you are putting fiber, uh, flexometallic tube through the uh, play, um, uh, awake intubation with fiber optic, uh, the connector sometimes cannot be removed. So what, what should we do? If you are putting fiber optic tube through the flexo... No, no, no flexometallic tube through the uh -huh. fiber, fiber optic intubation. Just now uh -huh. I asked whether which, which type of tube you are going to put, flexometallic north pole or uh, routine portex. So in that case, many a time the connector cannot be removed, you know, through the uh, flexometallic. So, yeah, that, that so happens. Connector, need, connector does not need to be removed for mounting it on the fiber optic that we require to be removed for intubating LMA. This, you can mount it on the fiber optic along with the connector and then you can slide it like the same. Why do you need to remove the connector? Rather, fi fiber optic 
has one ET tube holder in which the connector goes in. Um, I think she's saying that the connector doesn't get removed from the fiber optic port. From the fiber optic? No. Uh, That's what I want I'm to say. To say that it, you do not need to remove the connector itself. Hey, uh, what, what does she want? Even I think uh, because after the mounting, that uh, connector which has been mounted on the fiber optic port, portal, I think she's talking about that one. It's not difficult to remove that. Uh, it's not that difficult, but somehow even if it gets struck, there is a simple thing. You can always apply some jelly to it if you think the fiber optic port is getting some damage or I think. But but, but we never know which which which, which, uh, port, which which will get. Sir, I think she she wants to ask that once we put in the tube, हम लोग जो वो tube चढ़ाते हैं ऊपर fiber uh -huh. optic scope पे ऊपर. So everyone, uh -huh. each and every technician removes it and puts the connector in his or her pocket. And this is what she wants to know. Sometimes it gets stuck. Me, I mean, Anji, we don't need to remove the connector when you then are. Then how will you? How will you pass the fiber optic scope through it, ma'am? Fiber optic. Ma'am, just try to understand the question. What she is asking. This is what I feel. Is that fiber optic nikala? We have packet me se, and uske andar humne. I mean, this definitely tube nikali. Uske andar humne fiber optic dal lai. कहा दिक्कत हो सकती है दो तीन चीजों में होती है फाइबर ऑप्टिक जब आप ऑप्टिक जब कर रहे हो जब आप मैं सिंपल सोल्यूशन बताता हूँ उसका Uh, use uh, take a one syringe of two two ml saline in it, put it to the endotracheal tube. It become very easy to slide the fiber optic. Although the lumen is uh, much larger for seven and a half, suppose we are putting a seven point five, and yes. you are doing adult fiber optic, it can easily slide through with the saline infiltrated into the tube. It become very easy. So once you mount okay. that tube to the fiber optic, that fiber optic port is not that difficult to disconnect from the connector. so once you have intubated you have slided the tube you take out the fiber optic the next problem comes if the mouth bite is there the uh, the uh, mm -hmm. tongue bite is there yeah, yeah, so sometimes uh, it sometimes yeah, it yeah, becomes yeah, difficult yeah. to take it out sometimes it becomes yeah, difficult to take it out through fiber optic uh man through the tube also yes yes tube also but if you just uh, at that time also you can apply some saline or some jelly to it it can easily come out एंडोट्रेकल ट्यूब थ्रू ओवर द्रॉकोस्कोप रिमूव द कनेक्टर एंड देन पास and then after everything is over you can put the connector again that you can also do sir that also another option uh, but i remove think remove the uh, plastic uh, blue thing first then okay. uh, over the bronze so uh, ha that can be most percent percent we actually with that what happens the tube become loose you have to somebody has to hold the tube you should not keep on sliding when you are introducing the fiber optic into the oral cavity Or into the nasal cavity, the tube become loose. It keeps on coming to your hand also, na. So better. That's why connector we use to mount on the fiber optic. We put better small micro port to it. Everybody is practicing differently. This is what I could gather. But anyway, very good suggestions from all of you. They put you put a small micro port upper connector to jail me hota hai or micro port. But definitely we try with the connector. It's a good idea. Amen. will hold it a better and there is uh, you can ask your technician he must be having there is something called tube holder every fiber optic company it gives which is lying there wo usually nikal ke technician wo uske box mein dal dete hain that holds that blue connector very well that actually no we have not even seen it maybe wo kahin rakh dete hain box mein rakha hoga with the haan, manufacturers this laake puchna aap ha so it will be much easier then zarur thank you thank you Thank you very much. I think Dr. Jotsna is having some problem with the dongle, so it is time uh, with Bajwa sir's permission. Can we uh, close yeah. the session, sir? Please, please, please. I yeah. think every done, everyone has done well today. It's a good discussion. Yeah.
Yeah. And then next week we will meet. I will tell the topic tomorrow, day after tomorrow. So yeah. next week we'll meet at the same time. Six. And before that, uh, leaving the stage, everyone is uh, invited for the clip series on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. The topic will be the labor analgesia this time. And we will have all the gynae and uh, anesthesiology, labor, obstetric anesthesiology mixed there. A very, it will be a very good panel discussion on labor analysis. You are coming Thursday. Thank you very much. So Thank I will you. end by saying. Thank